Today I'm going to remake a hyper-realistic cake that I made years ago. Cause I really like the cake design, but I think I can do even better this time. This isn't the first time I've remade an old cake. So while I make today's cake, I'm gonna show you some of my old cakes that I've remade. So we can compare my old cakes with my new cakes. Let's see if I've gotten any better over the years. Let me know what you think about each cake in the comments. My name is Natalie Sidesurf and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today I'm gonna show you how I made an Alphabet SpaghettiOs cake. The first time I made this cake, back in September of 2020, I got a lot of feedback from people who all had the exact same critique. They liked the cake, but were disappointed that the bowl wasn't edible. It's true, I placed cake alphabet spaghettios into a real bowl the first time I made this. Now I pride myself on making cakes that are 100% edible. I'll find a way to make everything edible. Edible plastic, edible paper, edible details, edible everything, except on two cakes that I've made. The alphabet about SpaghettiOs cake that I'm remaking today and my mac and cheese cake. With the mac and cheese cake, it was the same thing. Cake mac and cheese placed into a real bowl. Now I have what I think is a very good excuse as to why I did this. It wasn't because I couldn't do it. It wasn't because I was lazy. Basically, making an edible bowl is a more advanced technique. So I used a real bowl for those cakes because I wanted to provide you guys with a hyper-realistic cake tutorial that's for beginners. So that anyone can try making their own hyper-realistic cake, even if they have zero experience. That being said, if any of you want to give hyper-realistic cakes a try, I highly recommend checking out my mac and cheese cake tutorial. I think it's the perfect hyper-realistic cake for first-timers. I've had a lot of people tag me in photos where they used my mac and cheese cake tutorial and their cakes looked amazing. I'm so proud of them. Another cake that I've made twice is a pizza cake. Now let's go back. Let's go way back to 2011 because that is the year that I made my very first pizza cake. I was very new to cake sculpting at the time and I remember learning so much from making that cake. The pizza sauce was strawberry jam, the toppings were made of fondant, and I used a real cheese grater to make shredded chocolate cheese that I melted with a handheld torch. You ready to see one of my very first sculpted cakes? Here it is. It's not too bad. I mean, I don't think that I could actually trick anyone into thinking this is an actual pizza, but I was on my way. I was getting closer to hyperrealism, which was my goal. Now let's fast forward to 2019. I had eight additional years of realistic cake making under my belt, and I was ready to revisit the pizza cake. Only this time, rather than make an entire pizza pie, I made a slice, but not just any old slice, a Detroit-style pizza slice. Detroit-style pizza, if you're not familiar, is typically rectangular with a thick crust that's like chewy, but also crispy, and the sauce is usually on top of the cheese rather than underneath. It's one of my top favorite styles of pizza. So this time around, the type of pizza that I decided to make in cake was far less generic than my first go, and I really wanted it to read Detroit style. So I hand sculpted that entire cake, being very intentional with every little bubble in the crust and fold in that melty cheese. I wanted it to look effortless, even though it took a lot of effort. <laughs> all right, here is my updated pizza cake in all its pizza glory. I even made it look greasy, how pizza is meant to be. And now I'm hungry. Hyper-realistic cakes are life-size in order to make you think that it's the real thing. The next cake remake that I wanna show you is a little different than the others. It's not a hyper-realistic cake because I'm not about to attempt to make a life-size T-Rex. <laughs> well, not yet at least. So it's a T-Rex cake and the first one I made was back in 2018. Sculpting dinosaurs is fun. It's like really fun. Pretty much any reptile-like animals make for a good time because they all have these like creases and there's folds and bumpy skin texture and I can sculpt those details all day. I absolutely love it. Now the entire reason I wanted to make this cake is because I thought that it would be hilarious to make a realistic detailed T-Rex wearing a Christmas sweater. <laughs> but since the T-Rex has short stubby arms, the sleeves of the sweater are way too long so they're like hanging down and you can't even see his little hands. <laughs> all right, let's have a look. <laughs> yep, it's still cute. I love him. And apparently I still find this joke really funny. The second time I made a T-Rex cake was three years later in 2021. I was asked to make it to help promote the second season of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, which is a Netflix show. In this more recent version of my T-Rex cake, I made a few adjustments from the last time. Rex is no longer wearing a sweater because that doesn't exactly fit with the theme. 
theme, and the colors are a bit more vibrant and kind of playful. His mouth is open super wide, so I got to make all those little T-Rex teeth, and he had a big slobbery tongue. And one of its legs is raised, so it's balancing on one foot, as if it's in stride, running at ya. There is definitely more movement in this one's stance versus my first version. All right, let's have a look-see. There are similarities between the two cakes, but at the same time, they're very different. What do you guys think? Do you prefer the T-Rex in a Christmas sweater or the open mouth T-Rex? And there you have it, an alphabet SpaghettiOs cake. This time, it's 100% edible with a chocolate bowl and spoon. I'm really happy I remade this one. It's been bugging me for a few years. <laughs> now let's cut the cake. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for a brand new cake every week. And I'll see you next week for another cake.